motion for Jamal Tish. All right, what's a strategic move right here? What's <laughs> There was no nice strategy spike. today. Today was just about hanging. Dayton told me for the race, just commit and believe, commit and believe. And if I, in the starting line, I was just repeating that for myself. And yeah, I mean, when, I, when we went out in 55, I was like, well, that's fast. I was like, it's gonna slow down. I didn't slow down. So I just tried to be on top of the best runners because I was like, if I'm behind Jacob or behind the CV, I know they're gonna go to the, to the top of the race. So that's what I tried to do. And in the last hundred, I was just catching bodies and trying to, you know, get in the middle. But yeah, it was a very long straight for me. Only five second personal best, fourth in the world, I think. I couldn't have expected that this year. And seeing myself there, that it tells me that I can do a lot more in the next years and I can be a contender for the for the, Tokyo, uh, for the Paris Olympics and the next four championships. I heard you say to Ray that you thought you were going to get a medal. Yeah, I mean, I, I was catching everybody. I was like, well, people is dying. So I've been saving energy until the last stretch. And, and yeah, I mean, I saw it so close, but you know, it's, it's good to have another Spaniard taking it. I think the 500 Spain is in a very good spot right now. And I think we're going to, you know, be in the finals for the next year. So I'm going to fight for the medals. We've joked before that you're a great tactician, but now it seems like you can run fast. Did you know that you had a 330 in you? Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't know if it was 330, 331, but I definitely knew I could run fast. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a good tactician, like you say, but in this type of races, there's no much tactics. You know, it's just about who has the biggest balls, I guess, or who has the the best fitness and uh, yeah, I mean the the top three today is so, uh, so. Have you did you look at the clock? Have you ever seen those numbers before in the middle of the race? I think you guys oh, were yeah, out I one fifty one. I definitely look at the clock. I was like two thirty four for the other hundred. I was like, Mario, if you run fifty six, that's a three thirty. And I wasn't thinking about running fifty six. I was just thinking about passing people. And when I saw three thirty, when I crossed the finish line, I was like, wow, was like that's that's a that's a race right there. <laughs> What does it say about the 1500 that like you can go from NCAA's not winning it and then come and get fourth in the world and beat champions and, and guys who run super fast? I mean, are you not entertained? I think like the 1500 is the most entertaining event in the world. I mean, there's everything. There's you know, uh, very fast races, there's very slow races, and you know the good thing about it is like uh, here on the track we are all even, and, uh, and then like we just try to race against each other without pacers, and, and I think that's magical. We've seen guys, you know, you've been racing since uh, January, February indoors. We've seen guys sort of slow down and run out of steam. How do you keep going and run your best race of the year in the middle of July? This last Benhoi is, I mean, I, I think the good thing about Benhoi is he knows how to measure the workouts. And uh, I mean, I haven't worked out very hard this year because I was racing so much. And the good thing about it is I, I think I can get fitness from, from racing. And uh, that's another workout, you know, like when I was uh, finishing the race, I was doing a stress after trying to assimilate that work from the race and I think that way you can get used to doing hard efforts many times a year and and then also you get like the benefit like the tactic benefits benefits from you know racing so much and you can sort of like championship. Was at the start of the year was like making the world championships final was that on your radar? Yeah definitely yeah. I mean last year I had to watch uh, the Olympic final from home and you know that hurt a lot uh, and I was like well Mario I think you deserve to be in the final this year and and that was my mentality coming into this year. When you wake up tomorrow, are you going to think, oh my god, I'm fourth in the world, or I wish I was third? Well, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be in the plane, because we leave at 3 in the morning today. So, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sleep that much. But yeah, I mean, tomorrow, I think it's going to be uh, hard to simulate all this. Because, I mean, I, I knew I could run fast. I knew I could be a middle contender. But, you know, like, you can't believe it. But until you do it, you don't, you're not going to fully believe it, yeah. Anything to say in Spanish to the family and friends at home? Uh, mamá, papá, os quiero mucho, Jaime, te quiero mucho. Muchas gracias a todo el mundo que me ha apoyado estos años. A mi entrenador Lucio Rodríguez y a todo el grupo de la Cid Blanca y en Salamanca. Creo que bueno, esto es un logro para todos ellos y que vamos a celebrar los próximos años. Gracias. gracias.